Hello friends, welcome to Tech Study Cell. In this video, I will cover some important IoT platforms which support both Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. And using their free plan, you can easily make an IoT based home automation projects for your home. So if you are planning to make a home automation project with Google Alexa, then this video will definitely help you to select the IoT platform that meets your requirement and how you can use that platform to make your next home automation projects. So without any further delay, let's get started. Let me start with ESP Rainmaker. It's one of my favorite IoT platform and I have made several tutorial videos on this platform. You can find a link in the description. Using this platform, you can control any appliances with Google Assistant, Alexa, and you can also create a lot of automations. But this platform only support ESP32, it does not support ESP266 or Node MCU. To use this platform, you just have to prepare a sketch according to your circuit, then upload that sketch or source code to ESP32 using Arduino ID. After programming, you have to open the serial monitor, then press and hold the boot button for 10 seconds, it will generate a QR code. Now install the ESP Rainmaker app in your mobile, turn on the location and Bluetooth, then scan the QR code, first it will ask for the Wi-Fi credential, after that the app will automatically add all the widgets in the dashboard, so within 2-3 minutes your project will be ready. Afterwards you can go to setting, voice service, then select Amazon Alexa, then follow these simple steps to connect Alexa with Rainmaker. For the Google Assistant, you have to install Google Home, then search for ESP Rainmaker, then it will fetch all the details from the Rainmaker to Google Home, then you can able to control the relays with Google Home, Google Assistant. If you are using their free plan, I will not recommend you to connect sensor with ESP32 because sensor will send data to cloud continuously and it will just exhaust the maximum number of request you can make to server under free plan very quickly afterwards you cannot able to control the relay because the free limit already exhausted but still if you want to connect sensor then make sure sensor will send the data after two three minutes now before moving to the next iot platform let me tell you although i try to make the project without using any pcb but I will always recommend you to use PCB to avoid any loose connection and you can always download the PCB Gava file from my video description and order it from the GLC PCB. From GLC PCB you can order different type of PCBs at very affordable price. Here you can see they also provide a lot of services and recently they have launched multicolor silk screen PCB. After designing the PCB, you just have to upload the picture for your seal screen in JPG or PNG format, then place the order from the JLC PCB. And here you can see this is how it looks. And they also have free via in-pad service. I will request you to see this clip why it is very important for the complex PCBs. When there are many solder pads on the chip, it becomes difficult to do the fan out. So we drill vias to transfer the traces to other layers. Note that we first extend a trace from the pad before drilling the via. While routing becomes much simpler, you still need to route at least one trace from pad to via, so there can still be issues with pads being too dense or too numerous to route effectively. If we directly place the via directly on the pad, there's no need for additional trace before via. But this can lead to solder wicking away through the hole during soldering, causing defects or cold solder joints. Via in-pad technology addresses these issues. We still place the via on the pad, but then fill it with resin and plate it with copper. The surface shows almost no trace of this, and soldering is as reliable as with a regular pad. So I always recommend you to use JLC PCB for any kind of PCBs for your next electronics project. Next, I will talk about Arduino IoT Cloud. I have made several IoT projects using this platform. You can use ESP32, ESP266, Node MCU and similar type of microcontroller with this platform and you can either connect Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa with the Arduino IoT Cloud. To use this platform, first you have to create an account in Arduino IoT Cloud, then create a thing and there you have to select if you want to use Google Home or Amazon 
Alexa. After that, you have to add a device. If you want to use ESP32 or Node MCU, you have to select in that device and generate the secret key and device ID accordingly. Then you have to create the cloud variables. Here I will control four relay and one sensor. So with the first four cloud variable, I will control four relay. Then with the fifth cloud variable, I will monitor the sensor reading. Under their free plan, you can create maximum five cloud variable. After that, I will configure the dashboard. In the dashboard, I will add four switch visit to control four relay. Then one gauge visit to monitor the sensor reading. Then I will save all this configuration. Then prepare a Arduino sketch according to my circuit then update the device id secret key and the wi-fi credential in that sketch then program the esp32 or node mcu whatever the microcontroller you have selected in the thing after programming i will download and install the arduino iot remote app then i can see the thing name i will just tap on the thing name to open the dashboard on my mobile phone then to connect the Google Home, I will just open the Google Home app, search for Arduino under Works with Google. Then it will add all the widget in the Google Home dashboard and we can able to control the relay with Google Assistant. So this is another great IoT platform and you can easily make different type of IoT projects using it. Next, I will talk about Synric Pro. It's another very user-friendly IoT platform. You can control appliances with Google Assistant, Alexa. You can also use ESP32, ESP266. And the best part of this platform, you don't have to write the code manually. Using their zero code features, you can automatically generate the code for your IoT project. But only the limitation is under their free plan, you can control maximum three device. So if you are using their free plan and you want to use four channel relay module, you can control only first three relay through internet. The fourth one you have to control manually. Now to use this platform, first you have to create an account in Synric Pro. Then you can easily add three device. Just follow the step I have already shown in the details tutorial video link in description. Then to generate the code, you have to click on zero code and enter some details. Your code will be ready. You can just download the code then upload it to ESP32 or ESP266 as per your circuit. Then if the ESP32 is connected with the Wi-Fi, you can also use their Synric Pro app to control the relay. Otherwise, you can open Google Home app. Then under the box with Google, you can search for Synric Pro. Then add the Synric Pro account in your Google Home dashboard. And if you want to control it with Amazon Alexa, then just add Synric Pro account in your Amazon Alexa app. Then you can able to control the first three relay with Google Home and Amazon Alexa if you are using their free plan. As you don't have to write the code manually, so any beginner can use this platform. So I will recommend you to check my videos on Syndic Pro. You can find a link in the description. Next, I will talk about the Cadio Home Automation. In my view, it is the most easy to set up IoT platform for all the beginner. You don't need any coding skill. You just have to upload a firmware to ESP32 or ESP8266. Then do all the configuration in the Cadio Home Automation app according to the circuit. Then your project will be ready. And this IoT platform has a lot of useful features. Here you can see it has a lot of useful features. Only limitation that it has trial license for 500 hours. So if you are using their free plan, then after every 500 hours, you have to upload the firmware again and do the configuration again and again after every 500 hours. You can also buy their paid plan at very reasonable rate. Now to use their platform, first you have to download the firmware and flash tool. Then using the flash tool, you have to upload the firmware to ESP32 or ESP266 according to your circuit. Then you have to install the Cadio Home Automation app and press and hold the boot button for 3 to 5 seconds to go to config mode. After going to the config mode, you have to connect with the hotspot created by the ESP32. 
then you have to enter all the gpio details according to your circuit gpio for the switches gpio for the relays gpio for the wi-fi leds you have to also enter the relay type active low active high after entering all the details according to your circuit you can save that configuration then after some time the dashboard will appear automatically in the cadio home automation app then you can able to control the relays with the cadio home automation through internet now for the voice control you have to open the google home app then under the box with google you have to search for cadio after adding the cadio all the device from the cadio will appear in the google home dashboard then you can able to control the relays with google assistant in a similar way you can also add cadio skill in the amazon alexa app it is very easy to use platform and any beginner can use it you don't need any coding skill you can also make iot projects using matter protocol it's free and the best part you don't need any coding skill you can control any appliances with google assistant amazon alexa but here you need a hub for that particular iot device say for amazon alexa you need eco dot for google home you need google nest and to generate the firmware we will use esp0 code so first you have to create an account in esp0 code platform then you have to select the device type for relay you have to select gpio for rgb led you have to select led after that you have to select the esp32 series according to your circuit then if you want to control single relay then just select the gpio and generate the firmware but if you want to control multiple relays then you have to manually edit this json file i have already covered in my previous tutorial how to edit the json file you can find the video link in the description after that we will generate the firmware then upload it to esp32 after all this process it will automatically generate the matter qr code now here we will control the appliances with alexa so here is my eco dot now i will quickly open the amazon alexa app and also turn on the bluetooth and location in my mobile then follow these simple steps to scan the matter qr with amazon alexa app after that all the device will be added in your alexa dashboard and you can also rename those device according to your requirement now your project is ready only the eco dot and esp32 must be connected with the same wi-fi network but you can connect your mobile to different networks so you can control these appliances from anywhere in the world now in this video i mainly focus those iot platforms which support both google assistant and amazon alexa but if you are good with only amazon alexa you can also make iot projects with tesmota esp alexa libraries i have made several tutorial videos on tesmota esp alexa so you can find a link in the description in this video i have not covered blink iot adafruit firebase as you cannot connect google assistant alexa directly with these iot platforms so i will cover this iot platforms in separate videos for now if you find this video helpful then please hit the like button and share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe for more such videos thank you for watching have a great day